Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode, we'll be talking about properties. Now, in the first episode, we did briefly discuss about properties when I told you to create parts and to change their properties through the properties window. If you clicked on any of the parts that you created inside of the workspace, then the properties window would show up, showing all the properties that you could change and modify however you so desire. But this time, we're gonna be doing something different with properties. This time, instead of modifying properties of an object through Roblox Studio, we're gonna be doing it through script inside of a game while it's running. So what we're gonna be doing is, from everything we learned so far, with printing, with data types, with variables, we're gonna be taking all that and we're gonna be modifying parts through script when we run the game and test it, it's going to change that part when we actually run the game. So inside of the workspace over here, we'll click on the good old plus sign to create a new script right here. And we're going to rename the script to, let's say, property changes. That's what we're gonna call it. And then of course we have uh, our default print statement. We'll just get rid of that. And so what we're gonna do in here is that we need to be able to know the location of the part that we're trying to modify. This is gonna be something very important to learn about as a programmer because you are gonna be doing this a lot, which is going to be finding the location of, of all sorts of objects that are inside of your game that's inside of the, the workspace right here. So how are we actually able to locate these objects that we're trying to look for and to modify? I'll be showing you right now. So let's say we want to locate the base plate. So as we can see, we have highlighted the base plate. This is the, uh, the, the base plate part that we can just move around. We can mess with it if we want to, but we want to be able to mess with the base plate through coding instead of through studio. And the way to locate base plate is by first getting a good understanding of the, the hierarchy we have going on inside the Explorer. In the first episode, I explained how the contents of a game is made up of is through this hierarchy. So now let me show you how it works inside of coding. So first what we're gonna do is we're going to um, first type in game because it's a data model that represents the entire game as a whole. So then what we're gonna do next is how we're gonna get to the second item is by putting a dot or a period. So the dot or a period is now, whatever's on the right side of the dot here is going to represent anything that's inside of the game folder. So for example, workspace, players, lighting, all of these are elements that are inside of the games folder. So what we can say is we can say with a capital W, workspace, because workspace is an item that's contained inside of the game folder. So now what we're gonna do is we want to locate the base plate, which then we're gonna type in another dot or a period, and now we can type in the base plate because the base plate is inside of the workspace folder and the workspace folder is inside of the games folder. So it's like, the, it's this hierarchy that's going on. It's, it's what I keep talking about. So if you get a good understanding of the hierarchy, then you pretty much know how to locate any object inside of the game. If you can understand that, then that's a huge step to becoming a better scripter. I mentioned that pretty much every object inside of Roblox contains properties. Now, Let's say we want to change transparency. It's basically just an attribute that shows you the visibility of a, of a specific object or a part. Like basically the number zero means that the object is completely visible. But then if we click on this and then there's like this little slider, we can turn it up. If we turn it up all the way, it's to a one. So one being uh, in completely invisible, but um, I have uh, the grid turned on, so that's why you can still see the grid, but the part itself should be completely invisible. So with transparency, you go from either zero or one. Zero being completely visible, one being completely invisible, and then there's like um, the in-between. So let's go back to our script. And like I mentioned with properties, properties are basically items inside of the base play folder. That's like the best way I can describe it. So we have, the game itself, and then we have the workspace, then we have the base plate. So now what we wanna do is, we want to do another dot, and now we have accessed every property that base plate has to offer. So what we wanna say here is, we want to say transparency because we want to update its transparency. So now the way we're gonna do this is that we're going to set this equal, so we're gonna say space equals space. So this is how we're going to modify 
one of the base plates properties, which is transparency in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to set this equal to one. We're getting the property directly. We're going into the game, we're going to the workspace, then we're going into the base plate, and then we're going into the base plate's transparency. We're gonna be changing the base plate's transparency to one. Because as you can see right now, the base plate's transparency is zero, but once we test the game and run, and run the script, the game's base plate is now gonna be changed to one because that's what we told it to do. So let's go back, let's hit test, and then hit play. And so when we load up the game, the base plate's transparency should now be invisible because we told the script that when we run the game, we will change the base plate's transparency to one to make it invisible. So as we can see, it clearly worked here. And, and that's great, that's what we wanted it to do. We want to incorporate variables into this property change. So let's drop two lines down here. And this time what we're gonna do is we're going to create a variable and set it equal to the base plate itself. That way we don't have to type game.workspace.baseplate every time to write the transparency. Because let's say, because it's, it's a way for us to avoid redundancy inside of our code. And what I mean by that is that we don't have to type in uh, game.workspace.baseplate baseplate.transparency equals uh, equals zero or game dot uh, game dot workspace dot baseplate dot transparency transparency equals one it's kind of annoying to type game dot workspace dot baseplate every single time so what would be more convenient is to just make a variable that's a shorter name and then set that equal to game.workspace.baseplate so that we have a reference to the base plate without having to type these three things every single time. So instead of this, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to um, delete all this. And what we're gonna do instead is we're going to create a variable again, type, we'll just call this uh, my base plate. That's what we're gonna call our variable. And then we're gonna do space equals space and then we're gonna say game, and then we're gonna say dot workspace, and then finally, we're going to put another dot and then say base plate. So now, what we can do here is that we have the base plate set equal to game.workspace.base plate. So now every time we wanna make a reference to game.workspace.base plate, we could just say my base plate. So what I mean by this is we can type in my base plate, and what we can do here is we can say dot transparency. We can just type in transparency right away because my base plate represents game.workspace.baseplate. And so down here we can type in my plate dot my base plate dot transparency equals one. Essentially, uh, it's the same thing as saying game.workspace.baseplate dot transparency equals one. These two statements do the exact same thing because game.workspace.baseplate is obviously the part we want to change its properties of, but my base plate up here references game.workspace.baseplate. So that's why down here we could just say my base plate. Okay, now we just modified one property of the base plate, but let's see if we can modify more. So instead of changing the transparency of my base plate to one, let's say we'll make it 0 0.5 and then we'll drop a line down here. So what we're gonna change now is, let's change the material. If we click down here in this dropdown, we can see that there's all these different material options that we can choose from. We can change the, we can change the property of base plate if we want to, like so. We could just uh, click on any of these options here uh, to change the material of the base plate. But now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to change it through scripting. So what we can do here is we can type in my base plate again to reference game.workspace.baseplate. And then we'll put a dot here to say material this time. So we're gonna, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to do space equals space again. But this time what we're gonna do is, you see that um, with each of these options here, they're not a number, that's for sure. They're not a Boolean, that's also for sure. So these options here, they all resemble strings. And from what I taught you about strings, strings are basically comprised of characters that are all wrapped around inside of quotations to, to represent a string full of characters. So it could be words, it could just be letters, it could be full sentences. So it's kind of, so that's kind of what strings are. We're going to type one of these materials inside of 
our my base plate dot material equals because we want to change the material to something else. So let's say we want to change the material to ice. We're going to do the double quotations and then we're just simply going to type ice. So now when we run the game, uh, the transparency should change, but also the material should change to ice. So if we run it and as you can see, our base plate has changed its material to ice and also its transparency to 0 0.5 after spawning into the game. One more property we can change with the base plate is something that has a check mark. When you see a property that has a check mark, that means it can either be true or it can either be false. It can either be on or it can either be off. So remember when I said the, the either true or false thing ties into a Boolean. So if you see a check mark in any of these properties, then that means you have to change it as a Boolean value. So if we go back to the property changes tab, uh, we can say my base plate, and then we'll just take like some random Boolean property like cast shadow, for example. Uh, we can then change this to say equal to false instead of true. Because right now, the property of base plate for cast shadow is set to true, but we can then set it to false to make it not the case. So that's that's an example of changing a Boolean property. So that's pretty much the basics of changing properties through scripting. It might seem kind of pointless right now, but trust me when I say that this is something that's very important to know about, and it is something that'll be very helpful later down the line in the future. So that's pretty much modifying objects inside of the workspace through scripting by changing its properties. In the next episode, we're gonna be talking about comments and even more data types from the ones we already know, because we only know three of them so far, but there's definitely a lot more data type to learn about. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. I will be catching you in the next episode and take care.